Today I'm going to go over the nine essentials you need to get started in soldering, specifically micro soldering. We're going to go through the tools and supplies you need so you can rip that console open, tear out that broken HDMI port and replace it with a brand new one. After you've watched a few videos of people actually doing it and practiced on some cheap boards first, of course. You don't want your own console to be the first thing you work on because it'll probably end up being the first thing you break. But once you have these nine things, you'll have the basic setup necessary to start your journey in the world of electronic repair. And yes, while there are only nine things you need to start with micro soldering, I'm going to add a 10th that you don't need it, but you're definitely going to want to add it to your workstation setup. And at the end, we'll add it all up and see just how much it costs to get started in this world of repair. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to absolutely need is something that can controllably melt solder. You could use a lighter, but that's only going to create a mess and not be very productive. And there are really only two ways to go about this, using a hot air station or a soldering iron. And unless you're doing very niche work, you're gonna need both. It's absolutely possible to remove an HDMI port or a USB-C port using just a hot air station if you're good enough, but in most cases, you're going to need both. And there's a wide variety of both hot air stations and soldering stations out there on the market. So you're gonna to wanna to do some research before you actually buy these. And I'm not talking about your basic Radio Shack soldering iron here. You're gonna want something that's a little bit more robust and professional if you wanna get into the world of micro soldering. The Radio Shack soldering irons use a sheath style tip, which isn't very good for controlling the temperature of the actual tip. The heating element is inside the handle and not inside the tip. What you want is a cartridge style tip where the heating element is actually inside the cartridge. These cartridge style tips come up to temperature faster and better. They maintain the temperature better and they can supply more heat to the board, which is what you really need when you're soldering and desoldering. They also allow you to control the temperature range and set it accordingly, whereas some of the cheaper stations like the Radio Shack, they only have one or two preset temperatures, which really aren't gonna do you any good. The more control you have over your soldering iron, the more control you're gonna have over your soldering. Now, if you've been doing some research, you might've seen this bright blue and yellow brand here. This is Hakko. They make really good quality soldering stations. So you could look that direction. The, this one right here that I have is actually the sheet style station and it's not great for micro soldering. It's good for other projects, but just not for micro soldering. Hakko does have a micro soldering station they sell, but it's on the pricey side. So I wouldn't recommend that starting out. I've used this Sager model in the past and I currently use this Axiom model right now. It came with very fine tips, which is very useful for what I do, but there's also a wide variety of shapes and sizes on the market that will fit both of these style handles. And as you get more experience, you'll realize that for different jobs, you're gonna need different tips, shapes, different tip sizes. And these cartridge style stations are also really good for what's called hot swapping, where you can have a tip that's being used and pull it out quickly and replace it with the new tip. And it's gonna come up to temperature real fast. As you can see here, that's less easy to do with the sheet style tips because the part that's hot is actually in the handle and you're not removing that, you're just replacing the tip. I think a relatively cheap station, say in the 50 to $100 range can serve you well for quite a long time. So that's what I would suggest if you're looking for a first time soldering station. This Sager model here costs $76 on Amazon. The second essential after a soldering station is a hot air station. You can use a soldering station to remove some of the chips like uh, you know resistors and capacitors, but you're not gonna be able to get the HMI ports or the IC chips off the board without a hot air station. And here, I'm going to highly recommend that you do a lot of research on the station you want to purchase and actually look for videos of people using the station and real reviews of the station. And unfortunately, it seems these days, Amazon doesn't really want people to have negative reviews of popular items. And just because, you know, a cheap station works amazingly well for someone else doesn't mean it's going to work amazingly well for you. They could be using it on thin boards or with a preheater that you just don't have yet. 
I just don't want you to do what I did and buy a cheap station thinking it's going to be able to remove these components reliably on the thicker boards that come with the newer consoles. I've tried to use this one here um, and it just did not work for me on Xbox Ones, PS4s and newer consoles. This just required too much heat and this wasn't supplying it. I don't know if I got a dud, but I you know, eventually went out and bought the Atten hot air station and I've really enjoyed working with that. So while I think you can get away with a cheaper soldering iron for longer, I just don't think you can get away with a cheaper hot air station for as long. You're eventually gonna come up against something that the cheap station is just not really gonna be able to supply enough heat to remove. It's not gonna melt the solder. And at that point, you're risking damaging the board you're working on because you're dousing it with a lot of heat, but just not quite enough or you inevitably get frustrated and start to kind of pry at the chip before it's fully melted and you run the risk of tearing some pads making the whole thing a much bigger mess and no one wants to do that and for that reason i'm really going to suggest here that you consider buying a more well-made and yes more expensive hot air station whether it's the Atten or Quick or some other even more expensive model, I think in the long run, you will appreciate that and you won't come to regret that decision. I regret buying the cheap station first, the Yahweh, Yawa. Um, I wish I would have just gone with the Atten in the beginning and saved myself 60 bucks. I just don't want you to make the same mistake I did. If you go with something like the Atten station, expect to spend about $260 on it. Okay, so with the major tools out of the way, what's the third thing you need to get started in soldering? Well, it's a surface to solder on. Uh, preferably something that's not going to get too damaged by the work you're doing. It doesn't have to be a silicone mat like this, although these things are pretty great. They take a lot of heat and don't seem to care at all. Uh, if you had a wood surface that you didn't mind showing a little bit of wear and tear from touching it with the soldering iron, which is going to happen, you could use that. Just don't use something like a plastic table because you're going to be supplying a lot of heat to the boards and it could easily melt the table and that would not be great. For this case, we're going to assume you have something that you can solder on, so the cost will be zero. The fourth necessity is solder. You can't solder without solder. This is what I use. It's leaded solder. Uh, the benefit of leaded solder is that it melts at a lower temperature meaning you don't have to subject the board and components to as high of a temperature for as long to get it to work. And, you know, that just keeps them healthy and happy. And yes, it does have lead in it, so just don't eat it. And also uh, wash your hands. You can expect to spend about $10 to get a roll of leaded solder. And you also can't solder without flux. Now, if you're like I was about a year ago, you might be wondering, what's flux? And to tell you the truth, uh, I still don't know what it is. All I know is that it makes the solder flow properly and makes good connections. Without it, your solder is going to form these like peaks and just make really bad connections. But with it, even your solder joints can look professional and dare I say better than factory. I can say that right. It's not copyrighted. Okay, good. Expect to spend around $15 for a syringe of flux. And if you're only using it, you know, once a week or so, it'll last you a good long while. But what if you accidentally put too much solder someplace? Well, that's where this comes in. This is a copper wick and it's used to soak up the solder. Let's face it, you're going to make mistakes. And even if you don't, you're going to need something to soak up the old unleaded solder that's on the board and replace it with new leaded solder when you tend the pads. You might could get away without doing that in some cases, but if there's any kind of corrosion on the board, you're going to you're going to want to remove that old solder and this is the way to do it. Some people might prefer using a solder sucker, but I just found that there are more use cases for the solder braid. This is really good at getting the solder out from the, you know, leg holes of ports, but with a little bit of work and some luck, you can use this or if you're really good with your hot air hot air station, you can get away without even removing that solder. So um, this is something useful in some cases, but I just think the use cases for the solder uh, wick trumpet. I only recently bought the solder sucker, so take that for what it's worth. A copper wick braid is going to run you about $7 on Amazon. And necessity number seven is isopropyl alcohol or IPA, something over 90%. It's good for cleaning up after yourself, uh, removing corrosion, 
And neutralizing flux, you don't wanna leave flux on the board after you've used it. It is corrosive over time, so you wanna make sure you get rid of that. There is some, you know, no clean flux, but I think best practice is just to clean up after yourself in general. So IPA is non-conductive, so you don't have to worry about using it on your electronics. It's good for cleaning a lot of things. Gunk, grime, flux, corrosion, and yes, sometimes even cockroaches, unfortunately. A big bottle like this will run you about $15 and last you a good long while. Necessity number eight, tweezers of some sort. You're going to be working with very small components and you're gonna need something to manipulate them and put them in place. You also want to keep your hands back when you're using hot air because that hot air is, while being directed onto the surface you're working on, will come up and make things hot around you. You don't want your fingers down there holding it in place because you're putting out 440 degrees Celsius. That's going to burn you in no time. So some very fine tipped tweezers will be what you're looking for. You probably should get a few just to be on the safe side. Expect to pay around $10 for a pack of three from iFixit. And the last thing you need if you're going to be micro soldering is a microscope. You need something that can reliably see the components that you're working on. And those are going to be very small, very tiny. There I say it, microscopic. You're not gonna be able to use your phone camera. You're not gonna be able to hold it up to your eye while you're working. And even these like helping hands with a magnifying glass aren't going to be able to provide the magnification you need to reliably see the solder joints that you're gonna be working with. I use this type of microscope. It's connected to a monitor that allows me to see it. There are other microscopes available. There are the stereoscopic type that are really big and really expensive. There are also microscopes that come with an LCD screen kind of attached to them, an all-in-one setup. Uh, if you don't have a monitor lying around that you can use, that might be the cheapest option, but for me, this works really well. The only thing I don't like about this setup specifically is that this arm is kind of hard to manipulate and get in exactly where I want. It kind of likes to swivel on its own, and the zooming function of pushing it down and up is not the best. It's something I want to upgrade in the future, but it's not essential right now. Just do some research to see what type will work best for you and your setup. This on AliExpress with the arm cost, I think $115, so. And honestly, I think that might be all you truly need to get started in micro soldering repair and replacing like HDMI ports or component chips that you know are broken. And you know, all of these things will work great on you know tablets, phones, consoles, any kind of electronic really. And while yes, that's all you truly need to get started in soldering, I did say there was one more item you're gonna want to add to your setup and that's a fume extractor. You could probably get away with having a little fan at first to blow the fumes away, but if you really stick with this, you're gonna to wanna to invest in a fume extractor. Not only do the fumes from flux and solder smell pretty bad, they're also a health hazard. You really don't want to breathe them in for long periods of time, if at all. So if you do stick with this, you're gonna to want to invest in some sort of fume extractor. I just felt like that was somewhat of an important tool to recommend because if you're new to this realm, you might not realize the health effects that breathing in the smoke can have. And when it comes to fume extractors, I would recommend you lean more into the ones that include not only the carbon filter, but also a HEPA filter to actually filter out the particles and something that has a strong enough fan that it's going to actually pull the fumes away from your face. Now, are there more tools you're gonna want or need in the future? Yeah, sure. There's, you know, voltage injection tools, preheaters, multimeters, which honestly, multimeters are kind of almost an essential, but if you know what you're working on and what needs to be replaced, you don't really need a multimeter, but it's definitely high on the list. But you know, you can build that out over time and as you go, that's what I've done. I didn't drop a thousand dollars on all of this equipment at one time. I kind of bought it as I needed it. And that's what I would recommend, just buy as you go. So like, I didn't need low melt solder right away. So I didn't buy it right away. I didn't need a solder sucker right away. So I didn't buy it right away. I only bought it as I needed it. It, yeah, it kind of sucks having to wait for the products to ship in, especially if you're buying it from AliExpress because that can take a few weeks. But it's better than dropping all that money and then starting out and realizing that this just isn't quite right for you. I'd hate for you to be in that position. But if you start with the essentials, then you're only spending about, what, $500? 
And the most expensive thing you've bought at this point is the hot air station, the soldering station, and the microscope. And honestly, those three things, if you really didn't want to do this anymore, you could sell them on eBay and recoup a good chunk of what you paid, maybe in the 60, 70% range. Uh, you're not gonna get your money back on the more consumable things like wires and flux, because quite frankly, no one's gonna buy a half used bottle of flux. But hopefully that's not something you have to worry about. Hopefully you enjoy this hobby or potential profession because the more people fixing things in the world, the less waste there will be and that's just better for everyone. And let me know down in the comments if there's anything I missed that you think is essential to getting started in micro soldering or if there's anything here that you think you could do without. Perhaps together we can create the perfect list for newcomers. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something useful from it. If you'd like to see me put some of these tools to use, check out one of these videos and have a wonderful day.